National Science Foundation, Wikipedia article audio. The National Science Foundation is a United States government agency that supports fundamental research and education in all the non-medical fields of science and engineering. Its medical counterpart is the National Institutes of Health. With an annual budget of about 7.0 billion US dollars, the NSF funds approximately 24% of all federally supported basic research conducted by the United States colleges and universities. In some fields, such as mathematics, computer science, economics, and the social sciences, the NSF is the major source of federal backing. Grants and the Merit Review Process Scope and Organization Research Directorates Other Research Offices Overseas Offices Cross-cutting Programs National Center for Science and Engineering Statistics History and Mission Budget and Performance History Legislative History Timeline Public Attitudes and Understanding Criticism The NSF's Director and Deputy Director are appointed by the President of the United States, and confirmed by the United States Senate whereas the 24 presidentially appointed members of the National Science Board do not require Senate confirmation. The director and deputy director are responsible for administration, planning, budgeting, and day-to-day -day operations of the foundation, while the NSB meets six times a year to establish its overall policies. The current NSF director, confirmed in March 2014, is astronomer Franz A. Cordova, former president of Purdue University. The NSF seeks to fulfill its mission chiefly by issuing competitive, limited-term grants in response to specific proposals from the research community. The NSF also makes some contracts. Some proposals are solicited, and some are not, the NSF funds both kinds. The NSF does not operate its own laboratories, unlike other federal research agencies, notable examples being the NASA and the National Institutes of Health. The NSF receives over 50,000 such proposals each year, and funds about 10,000 of them. Those funded are typically projects that are ranked highest in a merit review process the current version of which was introduced in 1997. Reviews are carried out by ad hoc reviewers and panels of independent scientists, engineers and educators who are experts in the relevant fields of study, and who are selected by the NSF with particular attention to avoiding conflicts of interest. For example, reviewers cannot work at the NSF itself nor for the institution that employs the proposing researchers. All proposal evaluations are confidential, the proposing researchers may see them, but they do not see the names of the reviewers. The first merit review criterion is intellectual merit, the second is that of the broader societal impact of the proposed research. The latter has been met with opposition from the scientific and policy communities since its inception in 1997. In June 2010, the National Science Board, the governing body for NSF and science advisors to both the legislative and executive branches, convened a task force on merit review to determine how well the current merit review criteria used by the NSF to evaluate all proposals were serving the agency. The task force reinforced its support for both criteria as appropriate for the goals and aims of the agency, and published a revised version of the merit review criteria in its 2012 report to clarify and improve the function of the criteria. However, 
both criteria already had been mandated for all NSF merit review procedures in the 2010 reauthorization of the America Competes Act. The Act also includes an emphasis on promoting potentially transformative research, a phrase which has been included in the most recent incarnation of the merit review criteria. Most NSF grants go to individuals or small groups of investigators, who carry out research at their home campuses. Other grants provide funding for mid-scale research centers, instruments, and facilities that serve researchers from many institutions. Still, others fund national-scale facilities that are shared by the research community as a whole. Examples of national facilities include the NSF's national observatories, with their giant optical and radio telescopes, its Antarctic research sites, its high-end computer facilities and ultra-high-speed network connections, the ships and submersibles used for ocean research, and its gravitational wave observatories. In addition to researchers and research facilities, NSF grants also support science, engineering, and mathematics education from pre-K through graduate school. Undergraduates can receive funding through research experiences for undergraduates' summer programs. Graduate students are supported through Integrative Graduate Education Research Traineeships and Alliance for Graduate Education and the Professoriate programs and through the Graduate Research Fellowships. NSFGRF. K-12 and some community college instructors are eligible to participate in compensated research experiences for teachers' programs. In addition, an early career development program supports teacher scholars that most effectively integrate research and education within the mission of their organization, as a foundation for a lifetime of integrated contributions. The NSF's workforce numbers about 1,700, nearly all working at its Alexandria headquarters. That includes about 1,200 career employees, 150 scientists from research institutions on temporary duty, 200 contract workers, and the staff of the National Science Board Office and the Office of the Inspector General which examines the Foundation's work and reports to the NSB and Congress. The NSF relocated its headquarters to Alexandria, Virginia in 2017 from Arlington, Virginia. The NSF organizes its research and education support through seven directorates, each encompassing several disciplines. The NSF also supports research through several offices within the office of the director. NSF also has three overseas offices, to promote collaboration between the science and engineering communities of the United States and other continents' scientific communities. In addition to the research it funds in specific disciplines, the NSF has launched a number of projects that coordinate the efforts of experts in many disciplines, which often involve collaborations with other U.S. federal agencies. Examples include initiatives in NSF's National Center for Science and Engineering Statistics gathers data from surveys and partnerships with other agencies to offer official data on the American science and engineering workforce graduates of advanced U.S. science and engineering programs, and R&D expenditures by U.S. industry. NCSIS is one of the principal U.S. statistical agencies. The NSF was established by the National Science Foundation Act of 1950. Its stated mission is to promote the progress of science, to advance the national health, prosperity, and welfare and to secure the national defense. Some historians of science have argued that the result was an unsatisfactory compromise between too many clashing visions of the purpose and scope of the federal government. 
The NSF was certainly not the primary government agency for the funding of basic science, as its supporters had originally envisioned in the aftermath of World War II. By 1950, support for major areas of research had already become dominated by specialized agencies such as the National Institutes of Health and the U.S. Atomic Energy Commission. That pattern would continue after 1957 when U.S. anxiety over the launch of Sputnik led to the creation of the National Aeronautics and Space Administration and the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. The NSF scope has expanded over the years to include many areas that were not in its initial portfolio, including the social and behavioral sciences, engineering, and science and mathematics education. The NSF is the only U.S. federal agency with a mandate to support all non-medical fields of research. The NSF has come to enjoy strong bipartisan support from Congress. Especially after the technology boom of the 1980s, both sides of the aisle have generally embraced the notion that government-funded basic research is essential for the nation's economic health and global competitiveness and for national defense. That support has manifested itself in an expanding budget from $1 billion in 1983 to just over $6.87 billion by FI 2010, stagnating since with $6.9 billion for FI 2013 NSF has published annual reports since 1950, which since the new millennium have been two reports variously called Performance Report and Accountability Report or Performance Highlights and Financial Highlights, the latest available FI 2013 Agency Financial Report was posted December 16, 2013, and the six-page FI 2013 Performance and Financial Highlights was posted March 25, 2013. Recently, the organization has been focusing on obtaining high return on investment from their spending on scientific research. In the midst of World War II U.S. policymakers became convinced that something had to be done with America's scientific infrastructure. Although the federal government had established nearly 40 scientific organizations between 1910 and 1940, the U.S. relied upon a primarily laissez-faire approach to scientific research and development. Growing rubber shortages and other war-related bottlenecks led many to rethink America's decentralized and market-driven approach to science. Despite a growing consensus that something had to be done, there was no consensus on what to do. Two primary proposals emerged one from New Deal Senator Harley M. Kilgore and another from Van Evar Bush. Narratives about the National Science Foundation typically concentrated on Van Evar Bush and his 1945 publication Science The Endless Frontier. This began to change in the late 1970s when scholars looked closer at the historical record discovering that the NSF first appeared as a comprehensive New Deal policy proposed by Sen. Harley Kilgore of West Virginia Swept into office on the wave of New Deal politicians, Kilgore was a small businessman with a deep distrust of monopolies. Looking about the landscape of wartime research Kilgore was concerned about the largely laissez-faire approach to producing technologies and products. He was also concerned about the lack of coordination between the federal government and private firms, believing that organizational chaos would lead to a failure in technology production. He was distressed by the concentration of research activities in the hands of a few elite universities and a few private firms. He feared that monopolistic industries had no incentives to develop the products needed for war and post-war economic and social welfare. His solution was to propose a comprehensive and centralized research body that would be responsible to many stakeholders and that would be in charge of producing both basic and applied research. According to this vision, 
research would no longer be driven by the invisible hand of the market. Research projects would be selected by the public. This public would be represented by a committee of stakeholders including commuting members, industry, and academia. Research results and products would not be owned by private interests, instead the public would own the rights to all patents funded by public monies. Rather than let the market pursue applied research, the proposed agency would pursue both basic and applied research that would support science direct economic and social importance. Responding to his worry about concentration, research monies would be equitably spread across universities. Kilgore's proposals met mixed support. Non-elite universities as well as small businesses supported his proposals. The Budget Bureau also supported him. Opponents feared that the policy would take research out of the hands of scientists. Others suggested that the policy would socialize a large and independent section of the economy. Another opponent was Van Evar Bush, who was the liaison between Congress and the Office of Scientific Research and Development. He recognized some of the same problems as Kilgore highlighted, and liked some things in Kilgore's proposals, but he thought that the proposed Federal Science Agency should have a much different form. Bush did not like the idea of letting social interests and community members drive science policy. He feared that the selection of research projects would become politicized, and he also had complete faith in the ability of scientists to pick the best possible projects. Furthermore, in contrast to Kilgore, he felt that the agency should have the narrower mandate of pursuing only basic science, rather than basic and applied science. Unlike Kilgore, he believed the public should not own research results and products, Instead responsible researchers should own the research results. Broadly speaking, Bush's vision was significantly more narrow than Kilgore's proposal. It maintained the status quo in patenting arrangements, it limited project selection to scientists, and it narrowed projects to basic research. Kilgore first introduced his policy in 1942 under the title The Technology Mobilization Act. After failing multiple attempts, the NSF Act passed in 1950. The final bill mostly took on the character of Van Evar Bush's proposal. Broadly speaking it brought about a fragmented or pluralistic system of federal funding for research. During the eight years between initial proposal and final passage, new and existing agencies claimed pieces from the original proposal, leaving the Science Foundation with limited responsibilities. In the end the final policy represented a failure for those who believed in popular control over research resources, and those who believe that planning and coordination could be extended to the sphere of science policy. Conversely the final policy represented a victory for business interests who feared competition from the government in the area of applied research and who saw Kilgore's patent law proposal as a threat to their property rights and for scientists who gained control of what would later become an important source of resources and professional autonomy. NSF surveys of public attitudes and knowledge have consistently shown that the public has a positive view of science but has little scientific understanding. The greatest deficit remains the public's understanding of the scientific method. Comparison surveys elsewhere in the world, including Japan and Europe, have indicated public interest in science and technology is lower than in the U.S., with China a notable exception. A majority of Americans had heard nothing at all about nanotechnology in 2008. In May 2011, Republican Senator Tom Coburn released a 73-page report, National Science Foundation, under the microscope, 
receiving immediate attention from such media outlets as the New York Times, Fox News, and MSNBC. The report found fault with various research projects and was critical of the social sciences, it started a controversy about political bias and a congressional inquiry into federally sponsored research. In 2014, Republicans proposed a bill to limit the NSF Board's authority in grant writing. In 2013, the NSF had funded the work of Mark Carey at University of Oregon with a $412,930 grant, which included a study concerning gender in glaciological research. After its January 2016 release, the NSF drew criticism for alleged misuse of funding. Biological Sciences, Computer and Information Science and Engineering, Engineering, Geosciences, Mathematical and Physical Sciences, Social, Behavioral and Economic Sciences, Education and Human Resources. Office of Cyber Infrastructure, Office of Polar Programs, Office of Integrative Activities, Office of International Science and Engineering. Brussels for Europe, formerly based in Paris, Tokyo for East Asia, except China, Beijing for China. Nanotechnology, the science of learning, digital libraries, the ecology of infectious diseases.